Man, we're gonna have to go to GDH soon. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, we're just now finally ready to go here. The board is dry-ish. The camera lens is clear-ish. And we're, we are in class. Not ish in class, we are in class, which is a good start. Okay. Uh, and we're not getting rained on, although we're getting humidity to pond. This, this comes with the territory. Uh, <clears throat> so here's the problem. Uh, the problem, I mean the example problem, the, the one we're going to, the, the problem we're going to work on. Okay, so there's a, a car tire, there's a, you're driving down the road, and in front of you is a car, and it's driving down the road, and it picked up a bump on its wheel. I don't know if it ran over a nail, or it ran over a rock, and it got stuck in the tread, but somehow there's a chunk of something on the tire of the car in front of you. Here's the tire. I'm trying to draw the tread. That's the tread on the tire. Just use your imagination. Like, you're looking, I mean, here's the wheel spinning, okay? And you're not looking at it this way, you're looking at it from the back end, okay? So you just see a square, but it's, it's spinning. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay? And, <clears throat> and there's a chunk of who knows what, and this marker either doesn't work or the board is too wet to work. We'll try this one. There we go. Okay, there's a chunk of something stuck to the car tire in front of you as the car is driving down the road. And it tells you that the car has a speed of three meters per second. And the question is, there's several questions. Let me read them to you. Uh, <clears throat> A, explain the motion of the bump. What does it look like from your viewpoint? Question B, well, let's just start there. Explain the motion of the bump. What does it look like? Up and down. What kind of up and down? Some key words here. Simple. This is simple harmonic motion because you only see one dimension of the two-dimensional circle. <clears throat> okay? Second question. If the bump is 0.3 meters from the axle. Okay, that's the radius of the tire. Okay, it's point, the radius is 0.3. The question is, what's the bump's period of oscillation? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Omega is a useful way to get there. <clears throat> so what is omega? Uh, RV. True. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. No. Other way around. V equals R omega. I think that's what you're trying to get at, right? And I think that's what you said, but you said, yeah, okay. Okay, so given V we can now get omega. What does that omega mean? The angular velocity. Of what? Of the wheel, right? How fast is the wheel spinning around? And what does that omega mean? <clears throat> that it takes that long for uh, a revolution. It's how many angles per second the wheel's going through, right? In radians. Okay, so how can we get from here to here? Okay, wait, let me, let me, what's the definition of this? It's, it's number one on your Fantastic Four on the angular side. Change in angle over time. <clears throat> what is that? What does this one mean? The time it takes for one revolution. The time to go once all the way around. Does that make sense to everybody? But it's a time, right? So we could put that downstairs, because it is a time, but how many angles has it gone through in one complete revolution? Two pi. Yeah, it's gone through 360 degrees, which in radians is 2 pi. <clears throat> one complete revolution. So look, once you know omega, all you need is a 2 pi, and everybody's got that on their calculator already, you can get straight to period. And now what does that mean again? What does the period mean? The time it takes for the tire to go once all the way around. 
In terms of simple harmonic motion, what does that mean? Yeah, if it started at the top, it's the time it takes to get back to the top. Or if it starts at the bottom, it's the time it takes to get back to the bottom. <clears throat> or if it starts in the middle, it's the time to go up and down and back to the middle. Does that make sense to everybody? One complete cycle. <clears throat> okay, how y'all doing? Any questions on this? Okay, so let's get that answer. Let's see. <coughs> so omega <coughs> is going to be equal to V over R. Okay, so 3 over 0.3. Y'all should be able to do this one. Don't break out your calculator now. Okay, wait. If it was 3 over 3, what would it be? 1. one. If it's 3 over 0.3, there we go. Okay, so this is, omega is 10. Okay, so now uh, you've got 10 equals 2 pi <coughs> divided by period. How are we going to get period? There you go. So let's multiply both sides by period. Oops, that one stays there. <coughs> crosses out over here. And then we'll divide both sides by 10. So this crosses out. So we get the period is equal to 2 pi over 10. And now 2 pi is, what's that number? What's pi? 3.14. Now multiply by 2, so what's that? 6.28. And now what happens when you, multi when you divide that by 10? What does that do? One moves the decimal place one place to the left. So what's this answer? 0.628. There you go, 0.628. <coughs> Seconds. Okay, you all see how all that works? And that's a time, right? Yep, yep, it's a, it's a measure of time, so it's measure, its units are seconds. <coughs> Any other questions? You all doing all right? That was an easy example. That's okay, it's, it's a useful concept to bring out this relationship here. Okay, uh, so... <coughs> I told you yesterday that you could use energies and Newton's second law, right? So let's talk about how to use energies. <clears throat> the humidity, humidity does bad things for markers on a board. <clears throat> okay, so let's say We've got a spring, and there's a block attached to the spring. Sorry, Seth. That might help a little bit. <clears throat> and the spring is one of those that could either be smashed or stretched. It, it, it can be, it can work either way but it, it likes to hang out its natural position. We might call it the equilibrium position is right here. So we'll call this spot x equals zero because that's how we define zero, right? <clears throat> now let's say I grab this thing and I squash it all the way back here. Okay, so now, and I'll draw this in a different color so we can see where I squashed it to. So now I squashed it here and that spring is no longer stretched out there. It's now is all washed up here, okay? What kind of energy does it have now? Potential energy. And what does the potential energy of a spring look like? What's the equation for that? There it is. Okay, so now this... <coughs> So the potential energy of the spring is one-half kx squared, where x is how much you've stretched it or smashed it. And in this case, I smashed it, right? And if we use the work energy theorem, energy initial equals energy final, minus the work not conserved, and we say, oh, you know what? There's no friction here, because this is one of those beautiful things that doesn't really exist, but we're going to pretend there's no friction. Starting out right here, you've got 
potential energy of a spring. I've stretched it, I've smashed it back to here and I'm holding it there. Okay, so let's ask the four questions. Y'all remember the four questions? Question number one, is it off the ground? No, where's the ground? Yep, right here, right? It, it never leaves the ground for this whole problem. It's just, it's gonna bounce back and forth when I let go of it, right? Okay, is, is, it, uh, is it moving at this point? It's starting right here, is it moving? No, I'm still holding on to the thing, so it's not moving, okay? Um, is it spinning? No. no, it's not spinning. Is there a spring stretcher smashed? Yes. Sure enough. So initially, <clears throat> it, all we have is this. One half k x squared. Y'all happy with that? Does that make sense to everybody? So, okay, go ahead. Wouldn't the, this be the final, not the start? Well, we I'm, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to slide it here, and I'm going to start it here, and I'm about to let go. Oh, okay, that's okay. So, but I haven't let go yet. I'm still holding on. Okay? That's going to be our final. So, yeah, so our starting point is here. Final is going to be somewhere else. Now, I told y'all, I gave y'all a name, a new vocabulary word. Just checking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those look like they have a lot of water in them. Yeah. That one. Yeah, that one's the most. And that one over there. Y'all might want to either dump that out now or take, take your chances. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Macy's like, I'll just take my chances. <laughs> okay. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. I gave you all a vocabulary word yesterday. Vocabulary word was when you stretch this or smash it as far as it goes, we got a name for that. What is that? Do y'all remember what that's called? The maximum stretch or the maximum smash is called amplitude. Okay, that's called the amplitude. Okay, so I'm going to change this. I didn't just stretch it some random x distance. I stretched it a. Does that make sense to everybody? I didn't stretch it. I smashed it. You all right with that? So I'm going to put in an a right here. Because <clears throat> that's what we're talking Oh, I warned you. Dump it out while you have the chance. Or it'll just get you. Braxton, you're everybody's hero today. <laughs> there you go. <coughs> Okay. Are y'all happy with that? Where we're at now? Okay, so now some time later, and I'll use yet another color. Let's see, I've used green and blue. Let's try pink. Let's see how pink is working this morning. Um, and, <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna let go of this. What's it gonna do? There's no friction. So it's gonna shoot that way. And when, then what? Is it just gonna keep going? Where, where's gonna, what's gonna be the limit? When's it, where's it gonna turn around over here? When the string reaches its max extension, which will be what? A. A. Do y'all see that? So at some point, when I let go of this, it's going to get all the way over to its farthest stretch point way over here. And that point there, that's going to be A also. It's going to go back and forth between these two spots. Now, if there was friction, what would it do? Yeah, each time it goes back and forth, it'll be a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. But there's no friction for this problem. Okay. So let's say <clears throat> it's now here. What's it doing right there? So I've let go, it's gone past neutral, and it's going this way, so now its speed is this way, okay? So tell me what's going on. What kind of energies do I have at this point? Let's go through the four questions. Is it off the ground? No. no. Is it moving? Yes. yes. So what does that mean? 
So we've got one half mv squared right here. So I'm going to have to, so one half ka squared equals one half mv squared. Okay, so remember, let's step through the questions. Is it off the ground? No. Is it moving? Yes. There we got that one. Is it spinning? No, no not spinning. Is there a spring stretched or smashed? Yeah. Yes. How do, what is it? Is it stretched or smashed now? Stretch. How do you know that? Yeah, here's where it's not stretched or smashed. Anywhere else it's going to be stretched or smashed. Does that make sense to everybody? So right here, it's been stretched a little bit. Does that make sense to everybody? So we'll call this spot, that one's X. So the random, well maybe, we, maybe we could call it X question mark if that makes you feel better. The, the place we don't know. Does that make sense to everybody? So what we're going to do is we're going to call this, um, so we're going to say plus one half kx squared, where x is how much is currently stretched. Would that make a is the max, x is the current position. Would yes. that make that first one negative? Well, <clears throat> good point. You're absolutely correct. This, this first one, a, should be negative because we, we went to the left, right? But it's squared. So but it's squared, so it doesn't matter. And that's the beauty of this. Energies don't care about direction. More, well, and that's the horrible thing about this. Not only do they not care about directions, but they can't tell you directions either. You have to figure that out on your own. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so there we go. This is a, an equation you can use on these sort of systems. Right here. Uh, sorry, I got kind of messed up by the green ink there. Let me try it again. One half K a squared equals one half mv squared plus one half kx squared. So if you know the position of it, you can find the speed. Conversely, if you know the speed, you can find the position. Or if you know position and speed, you can find the amplitude. So this gives you a tool to describe this motion. Y'all doing all right? Does this make sense? <clears throat> Go for it. Um, so the spring is moving, so and we use the uh, potential energy uh, equation for it when it was moving. Well, we don't really care about the, the motion of the sp spring. It's the motion of the block that we're concerned with. Okay. So th again, this is one of those beautiful situations where the spring itself has no mass. But we're not, we don't want to go down that road. We, when you give the spring mass, it gets real messy real quick. Reality's a mess. In general, this is the way, the way it works as a, I know y'all aren't physics majors, but I'm just telling you this is the general scope of the process, okay? You, you start with very simple situations. And that's your first level of physics. Frictionless, yeah. Massless pulleys, sure. Massless springs, yeah. And then the next physics, you add a little bit in. Get it a little bit closer to reality. And then the next level, you get a little more reality. And you get to grad school and you add a little more reality. <clears throat> At no point do you ever fully match reality. But as you saw in the lab, well, if you'll see in the lab this week, you can get like 0.2% error with this with making gross approximations like this. So what I'm saying is, we are describing reality, but we gotta, we gotta work with it, okay? Reality Say it again? Reality yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's an approximated reality. So we're approximating that these springs are massless. I don't think that was the answer you were looking for. They gave me an answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let me give you a problem here, okay? We're gonna use this. this. This same setup right here. And by the way, this works whether the spring is horizontal like I drew it here, or vertical up and down. The same thing. Now I want you to, I, I hope that that throws a little bit of consternation at this point. Everybody should be like, huh? Let me say that again. This works horizontally or vertically. Why should you have some consternation in your furrowed brow right now? Yeah, what happened to MGH? Okay, I'm not going to prove it to you in this class because that's a fun class, but I'm not going to do that. But <clears throat> the only thing gravity does is it shifts the equilibrium, 
Rather than having an equilibrium here, if I turned this upside down, it would shift the equilibrium down, but it would still bounce back and forth just the same. It behaves the same one way or the other. It just shifts the equilibrium, and we don't care how much it shifts it. We just care that it oscillates back and forth. Okay? So this works horizontally or vertically. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's the only piece you need to know. <laughs> Does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> okay, so let's say uh, this thing has a mass of 3 kilograms and a spring constant of 20 newtons per meter and the amplitude is uh, <clears throat> Let's make it 0.1, that's 10 centimeters, about yay far, okay? 10 centimeters, 0.1 meters. And uh, it is currently at uh, five centimeters. My question for you is, what's the velocity? How fast is it moving? What do we do? Plug in everything. Oh yeah, <laughs> just plug it all in and solve for V, right? It's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Okay, well, let's go ahead and do that. What, what? I gave you a bad unit. What do you got to do here? How do we do it? Two places to the left. So this is 0 0.05 meters. <coughs> so you just solve for V. Go ahead. Before you stop that, um, this equation here, if it's vertical, technically when you also have potential energy in the final? Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's, that's that consternation thing. It should leave you with a bit of a pit in your stomach. Uh, yeah, you just skip that part. <laughs> um, all it does is uh, it shifts the equilibrium, but it doesn't change the answer. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. And and yeah, I understand. It leaves you like, huh? But uh, like I said, I don't want. That's like a whole class right there. That's and you, and you don't want to go down that road. Let's, let's, yeah, exactly. Let's, let's push the I believe button on that. Push that and move on. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, anybody got it figured out yet? I'll work out the algebra here. You all work, out it, work it out on your own paper. I did a whole bunch of math in my head, which is dangerous in front of people, so double check me with your paper because I may have made a mistake. Okay. And you all plug in the numbers, let me know what you get. 0 0.224. Okay. Did, did you double check my algebra? Did I do it right? Okay. I, I, I did the same algebra. Okay. <clears throat> okay, next question. Same problem. Next question. What's the max speed? It's going to be it in the middle. Okay, so <clears throat> you're exactly right. Okay, so I asked a question. I said, what's the max speed? And you go, huh? How are we going to get that? Because that requires a little more information than you just gave me. But you already know the rest of the information, but you don't know that you know it. Mm -hmm. But Sarah just said it. What was it? It's when it's in the middle, like in a neutral position. Does that make sense to everybody? Because we talked about this yesterday. Where is the max speed going to happen? Right in the middle. So it's when x equals zero? Exactly. So what is the max speed? That means let x equal zero solve it for v. 
Does this make sense to everybody? Because at the middle, that's where it's moving fastest. At the ends, that's where it stopped. And it gets faster, 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 fastest, slows down, slows down, slows down, stops. Turns around, faster, 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 max speed, slower, 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 stops. It goes back and forth just like that all day long. Yeah? So this, um, so the number that we get from kx squared, from one half kx squared, is smaller than the number we have for one half k a squared? It, it better be. If it's not, your spring has gone outside of the amplitude, and your amplitude wasn't actually your amplitude. Does that make sense? <coughs> Okay, so what's Vmax? So, let's see. To find Vmax, how is this equation going to change? Well, your um, 1 half kx squared is going to equal 0. Yeah. So, when you solve for it, it's just gonna be one half. this piece will be gone, right? Yep. Just let x equal 0, and this piece is gone, and all you have are these two pieces. Okay? So, to find Vmax, I'm just going to do... Um, <clears throat> Ka squared over m square root. And that ground is wet, just in case you're wondering. Anybody get it yet? It's close. Yeah, it should be pretty similar. What'd you get for this one? Uh, faster, not much faster. Yep. <clears throat> okay, y'all doing all right? Any questions? <sighs> okay. Uh, let's see. I think we're co we've covered all this stuff. Um, okay. Say it again. The, the way. Wait, wait. Say that one more time. The wheel? Did we finish with the wheel? Oh yeah, we we're done with it. I thought you said you have one question and then you were going to ask this other one. I did this one. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so let's try another example here. Sorry if I confused you. Okay, let's see. So you've got a... Uh, a graph that describes the position of an object. Okay? So the graph, if you can see my computer, it's right there. I'll try to draw it better for you here. It looks like this. That should go right through the top. And here's the y-axis. Okay? And so this is the position of a particle as a function of time. <clears throat> oh wait, what is this? Oh no, this is a position. Oh, this is great. This is the y position This is well, it doesn't put any units on here, so I'll just let this be. Okay, so here's the picture. It tells you that from here to here, this distance is 8.26 centimeters, and it tells you from here to here, that distance is 5.26 two zero centimeters. That's what it gives you in the graph. And then there's several questions. So let me write those questions down. 
and it describes this describes the position of an object in simple harmonic motion and it says its frequency was measured to be frequency is 18 hertz and it's uh, the question is what's the amplitude the wavelength, the period, and the speed. <coughs> hmm. Oh, I need to convey some more information to you here before we can talk about this. Frequency? Yeah, the frequency is 18 hertz, so let's talk about that first. Yeah, okay, so let's, let's do one thing first. Let's talk about frequency. What does frequency mean? Frequency is the opposite of period. It's, it's actually the inverse of the period. So remember, what is, what is the period? It's the time to do what? The time to do go once around. The, so the period is the time to go once around. The frequency is how many cycles do you do in a second? So let me write that out. <clears throat> The period is the time per cycle. Okay? The frequency is how many cycles per time. You see how they're exactly inverse of each other? How many times around did it go in one second? Yeah. Well that's a little it's it's a it's a curvy F. It's like a cursive, like a script F. So it's not. It's not Greek. It's just. So the period would be one over eighteen. Exactly. So because these two are exactly flip flop of each other, frequency is one over period. And for that matter, period is one over frequency. They're exactly inverse of each other, and hertz. Well, it's just named after somebody. It's the same as just uh, the, these units. <coughs> so he, here's that thing. Remember when we were talking about radians and we were doing circular motion? And whenever you had that radians in there, it's kind of like it's not really there. Well, this is that same thing. Cycles per time, those units are one over seconds. You don't put a unit upstairs. There are no units up there. It's just... It's, per second is all it is. And, and, and that's called a Hertz, named after Hertz, a guy, okay? <clears throat> Y'all doing all right with that? Does that make sense? Okay, so now that you know what frequency means, what can you get out of this? Period. So we can get period out of this, right? So just do one over 18, and what do you get? Okay, so now, notice what this means. Let me just think about this for a second. 18 hertz, that's what the frequency is. What does that mean? It means it does its cycle up and down, one complete cycle, 18 times per second. That's pretty fast. That's pretty fast. Does that make sense to everybody? So the time to do one of those isn't gonna be very long. Does that make sense? That's the answer. Not very long. Are you all okay with that? Does, that? does the frequency kind of make sense now? Okay, well now, let's go to the other easy one. Let's go to amplitude. Zach was trying to make us do this earlier. That's good. Let's do it now. It's right there. It's right there. But wait, is that it? Is that the answer? No. Not quite. It's close. It's half of that? It's half of that. Why is it half of that? Because it's just there. Yeah, the amplitude is from the equilibrium to the top or from the equilibrium to the bottom, tomato, tomato, you pick it, it works. That's like the whole like, range. Exactly, that's from top to bottom. The amplitude is just one half or the other half. So the amplitude is just gonna be uh, 4.13. Oh, 
okay. <clears throat> yeah. Are we okay with using centimeters? Or Say that one more time. Are we okay with using centimeters or should we Um, sure. As long as you label it and let me know what you're using, that's fine. If it was WebAssign, WebAssign would tell you what units you have to use. But if it were a test, as long as you tell me what you're using, I'm good with it. Okay, any other questions? Y'all doing all right so far? Okay, now here's the next part of this. And this is the hard part. <clears throat> what we're talking about here is indeed simple harmonic motion, but it's simple harmonic motion in terms of a wave. Okay, so think about going fishing with your uncle and you're at you know, some lake somewhere on a windy day and there's waves coming into the shore. That wave has a shape that looks like this. That's a sine curve or cosine curve, whichever you want to call it, and that's it. This is the picture of those waves. That's why it's, I didn't write the units on here because I didn't want to confuse you, but it is the Y position versus the X position, not time. Y versus X. It's literally just a picture of the water wave coming in towards the shore. It doesn't have to be a water wave though. We could be talking about a sound wave like what's coming out of my voice or a wave across, I just, that was a bad idea. <laughs> Send a wave down a cord. I almost pulled the camera over. <clears throat> it looked cool it, Good, thank you. So, but th there's lots of different ways you could do this, but wave is what we're talking about, okay? And uh, I'll bring a spring on our Friday class and we'll, we'll make some waves so you can see it happen, okay? <clears throat> But can you all visualize this as a water wave? Do you all see what, how that works? Okay. And <clears throat> the question here, the next question is, what's lambda? That is the Greek letter lambda. And that's asking for wavelength. That's from peak to peak or trough to trough or middle up to next middle up. See what I mean? This is middle down. That's middle up. So you got to have middle up to middle up or middle down to middle down. Anyway, from peak to peak, that's one wavelength. Does that make sense to everybody? Or you could go from trough <laughs> to the next trough over there. Or from middle down to the next middle down over there. Do you see what I'm saying? One wavelength is what we're talking about. So how are we going to get that? Double yeah, it, it gave you half a wave from peak to trough, right? So it's going to be that same distance again from this trough to that peak. So it's twice that distance right there. Does that make sense to everybody? So notice water waves also move in simple harmonic motion. I told you these things are everywhere. You see them all the time. Even your just <laughs> very basic, your heartbeat is beating with simple harmonic motion. It's, it's everywhere. <clears throat> Okay, so this is uh, that times two, ten, what did you say, 10.4, is that what you said? I think that's right. 10.4 centimeters. Okay, you all doing good? Last piece, only one piece left. Two minutes to do it. I think we can pull this off. You just simply need another equation. This is called the wave equation. What kind of waves does it apply to? all waves. Anything that's a wave, it applies. Here's the wave equation. <clears throat> Velocity is equal to wavelength times frequency. It doesn't matter if we're talking about a sound wave, like coming out of my voice, or a light wave, like what's coming from the sunshine, or a water wave going across a lake, or a wave going across a rope, whatever kind of wave you want to think of, that's the equation. How fast is that wave traveling? is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. And we've got them both right here, frequency and wavelength. So you just multiply that out. I can't do that in my head. I could probably get, it's, it's better than 180, how's that? It's, it's, uh, almost, it's, it's 180 and almost a half, right? What is it? That would be Oh yeah, thank you, centimeters per second. <clears throat> Okay, y'all doing all right? Now, before we quit, 
What's that the speed of? So you're fishing with your uncle, right? And you're, you're watching the waves come into the shore and you've got your line way out there and, it's got a, and you're using a worm with a bobber on it. So that bobber is just, what, does that bobber come in with the wave? So the bobber stays out there, and the waves move past it, right? Let me ask you something. Is the water itself coming in? Is it like a river flowing towards the shore? No, because if it was, your bobber would come with it, right? But your bobber stays out there. So what is it that's coming at the shore? What is the wave? Like the motion of it. It's energy. It's not a physical entity that's coming at the shore. It's energy coming at the shore. Yeah, so when it gets, right, when it gets close to the shore, that wave causes it to curl over. Then you have physical motion. But before it curls over, the water itself isn't moving. But that doesn't work the same with sound. The sound is physically coming at you. No, no. It's still energy traveling at you. But what that energy is, so my voice is making the air molecules smash and expand, smash and expand. And it's that smash and smash, like there's not a, 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 a violent flow of air coming at you, yeah. right? It's just the smashing and expansion of air that makes your eardrum go back and forth. So it's just the energy that travels to you, which is kind of abstract, because remember when we talked about energy, I said energy isn't actually a real thing. There's no energy o meter. It's an abstract concept, but now you have an abstract concept coming at you with water waves or sound waves. Okay, <laughs> y'all have a good day. <clears throat>